So let's look at how a narrative is born. The narrative is that the government is targeting conservative parents as domestic terrorists. Scary, right? Where did this narrative come from and why? Well, first we have to back way up. Pandemic school closures sparked a new era of political activism at the school board level. Much of it on the right, pushing for schools open and masks off. At the same time, a conservative media crusade against critical race theory spurred local concerns and conflicts and a new wave of book banning. Many of the eruptions at school boards were authentic, while others were ginned up for the cameras. And the bottom line is that sleepy school board meeting rooms have become battlegrounds, with local disputes turning into national news, driven by daily coverage on Fox and Newsmax. So that's the context for what came next. The National School Board Association pleading for help four weeks ago, saying educators need help dealing with the, quote, growing number of threats of violence and acts of intimidation. School boards want to hear from parents, of course, they said, but it's getting scary out there. This letter even said some of the threats, quote, could be the equivalent to a form of domestic terrorism. So there it was. There was the T word. Within days, Attorney General Merrick Garland said he was very concerned, and he directed the DOJ to address the rise in, quote, criminal conduct directed towards school personnel. Criminal conduct, he said. Not parents shouting at a school board meeting, but threats, stalking, violence. Now, that letter from Garland has triggered weeks and weeks and weeks of right-wing content, um, all summed up by this Sean Hannity banner. As families stand up against out-of-control school boards, Biden DOJ wants to make parents the villains. So, on Fox News, you've heard the phrase domestic terrorists dozens of times. Obviously, the Biden DOJ never said it. It was a school board association that kind of sort of said it in a letter about serious threats, not about parents exercising their rights. But that's how a narrative is born. So flash forward to the day Garland testified on Capitol Hill, and many of the GOP lawmakers sounded like Fox talking heads. Watch. They may be domestic terrorists. Domestic terrorists. An act of domestic terrorism. Domestic terrorists. Are we domestic terrorists? No. No, no, of course not. But this is how a narrative is formed. It's how it spreads. It's why the AG had to react. The National School Board Association put out a letter this weekend. They apologized. They, right. backed, they backed up from the... They we shouldn't have used that language. We shouldn't have said domestic terrorism. So what does that mean? Is that just a win for Fox? What does this mean? I'm not sure if it's a win for Fox necessarily. They're making a big deal out of it. It obviously. is more content, though. It is, yeah. it is more content. Uh, but what I think you re it's really important to point out here, Brian, in this segment is that uh, this Fox News coverage, this right-wing media coverage, uh, led to an you know, important time with the attorney general uh, this past week right. being right. basically wasted as these lawmakers played to the cameras. I mean, they know that the Biden DOJ is not targeting school board parents as domestic, domestic terrorists. But the audience believes that. And so you have lawmakers who have the attorney general, pretty important guy in front of them, and there are a lot of serious questions to ask him. And instead, they totally waste their time playing to cameras because they know this is airing on Fox and they know this is going to go viral and, and earn them political points. And that is really one of the sad effects of this, you know, information economy. 